How do you use the Citadel Expert paint set? Sci-Fi Wargamers. Greetings, hobby fans. My name's Marcel, and it's my mission to help you explore the hobby. So today we're talking about the Citadel Expert paint set. Paint set. Paint set. Rather, why is that so hard to say? And uh, in this instance, we're going to tell you how you're supposed to use it. Back in the day, I was scared to use this thing because like I said, I didn't think I was an expert. We recently did a video on this and if you want to check that out, you can see it up here somewhere. But before we jump in, I just want to remind you all to please like and subscribe. That means you, Ashley. If you enjoy the content you see on this channel, then please consider joining the Patreon, the link to which is in the description below. And if you do, I will love you forever. So anyway, let's jump in and see how to use the Citadel Expert paint set. Are they inks or aren't they? We have been talking about using ink washers in heavy metal for quite some time now, and the move to complement our other existing range of Citadel colour paints was an obvious one to make. The skilled chemists who developed the special washers that make up the Citadel Expert paint set followed a tight brief from us. This ensures that this new range of pigments will excel in their capacity to bring out the best in a painted miniature. The inks not only had to be made up of the most suitable colours for our range of figures, but they had to meet four main criteria. First of all, the colours themselves needed to be brilliant to have the right effect when put to their intended use. The quality of the pigment's liquidity was essential for the wash. Where pigment had to be thin enough to flow smoothly into the finest recesses of detail on a figure. For the same reason, the strength of pigmentation needed to be much better than that of normal acrylic paint so that the inks would stand considerable thinning whilst retaining the intensity of the original colour. Finally, when you work on top of some inks with a highlight colour, that colour, white for example, can be corrupted by the ink as it bleeds through. Our expert paints are colour fast, however, so they are made more versatile than many. Now they're ready, and so are we. In theory, the Citadel Expert paints, specifically designed to complement the range of Citadel colour acrylics, are intended for the discerning painter who wants to give his figures that special Citadel look, so often seen in the pages of White Dwarf magazine. However, specially developed pigments can be used quickly and effectively by the novice as well. These initiates of Blanchitsu may be surprised at the range of effects they can easily achieve. The transparent layer of colour that may be added with ink is suitable both for enriching existing colours and adding a stage of shading to the base colour of Citadel acrylic. They cannot be used exclusively to paint metal miniatures, but they do create effects that cannot be achieved with any other medium. The glaze. This is basically a layer of ink that completely covers the base colour. This provides a richness and depth of brilliance that cannot be surpassed by use of acrylics only. The more glazes of ink you apply, the deeper the richness. For instance, if you glaze a red tunic over Citadel colour blood red with yellow ink, you will end up with a warmer, richer, brighter colour. Two or three glazes normally have the desired effect. Each layer of glaze must be dry before you begin with the next one. A glaze looks more effective when applied to a figure which has already been highlighted and shaded, and tends to unify these techniques, taking the random quality out of dry brush highlights, which many people find hard to master anyway. A glaze added directly to bare metal has an immediately effective result when it is applied to armour. Black, usually thinned with water, is obviously a good choice, taking the place of a black acrylic wash. This 
brings out the depth of the mail or plate with very little work. The additions of blues and browns to the black can give various hues to metal armour. Very thinned brown or orange glazers suit weathered or rusty adventurers perfectly. Chaos Knights can give the painter a chance to experiment with more colour. The applications of reds and greens etc to bare metal can result in the most glorious chaotic effects. The Wash The most common use of ink however is to apply a colour wash directly to the base, Citadel colour. This base colour must be allowed to dry first. The ink can then be thinned with water as desired to create the depth of shading required. A blue tunic, for example, can be covered in blue ink, but remember not to use too much ink on the brush or it may flood other areas of the figure which have already been painted. The ink's fluidity allows it to flow into folds and creases on the figure, creating a realistically smooth shading effect when it dries. You can leave the figure at this stage if you wish, but the more experienced miniatures painter will usually highlight the figure by either further blending or dry brushing. And in practice, ink washes are particularly effective when applied to textured surfaces such as hair, fur and wood etc. For example, boars mounted by orc boar rider figures can simply be given an ink wash all over the base colour. This can help when you want to paint units of wargaming figures quickly. Remember to always wash your brushes out after using Citadel inks just as you would with paint. Incidentally, they are non-toxic, non-flammable and safe to use. And there follows a final note about black. Black ink is a very useful tool for lining and adding detail to a miniature. This is neither a glaze nor a wash. It just replaces the normal use of black paint for this procedure. The advantage of ink over paint in this area is that the ink, whilst being extremely thin and therefore easier to handle than its acrylic equivalent, also has a very intense depth of pigmentation. For example, it doesn't rapidly become transparent when thin. So it flows easily and when thinned for those tiniest of details, the depth of colour remains. Now that you have all the information necessary to use the inks to their fullest potential, here's a list of the inks in the boxed set and suggestions on how to use them in specific cases. Of course there are more obvious choices, there are many many more. The first ink is red which is useful for shading red tunics and banners etc. Subtle shading effects on humanoid flesh and chaos armour. Secondly, orange. Glaze with this to enrich red cloth, neutral coloured cloths, fur, leather and wood. Thirdly, yellow. Glaze reds and greens. Apply to tunics, banners, orc flesh and dragon hide for brilliance and depth of colour. The fourth colour is green, and we can use this to shade or glaze orc and monster flesh, tunics, chaos armour and figure bases. Fifth is blue, which can be used for tunics, banners and dragon hide, amongst many other things. Next up is purple, which can be used on tunics, banners, chaos armour and flesh, shading on red and zombie flesh. Next up is brown. This is used for shading tunics, flesh, equipment, fur, weathering and rust effects. It's also great for skeletons. Now everyone's favourite colour next is chestnut brown, also called chestnut ink. This is perfect for use for a richer, warmer tone instead of your standard brown. And it's good for riding beasts and wood. Lastly, there's black. This is great for steel armour and equipment, lining and detail. Now we're going to have a look at some examples using the Citadel inks. The flesh on this space marine was created with a subtle blend of oranges and browns from the new Expert paint set. A Chaos Knight with subtly blended browns for the skull motif on the helmet and rusty chainmail. 
a yellow wash brings out the brilliant red armour. This is another exceptionally subtle face. Blue and green washers do strange things to the armour as well. Phil Lewis's skeleton, not the real one, the yellow-brown mix ink wash here makes this a very time-effective figure to paint. Green ink on bare metal and subtle brushwork completes the weather-beaten feel. Green and brown shading will feature a lot when you paint goblinoids, but a dilute yellow glaze over this critter's skin will bring the colour to life. Diluted yellow and brown wash for the flesh, brown inked claws and tail for this lesser demon of Slanesh. The standard red shading is applied to this goblin's tunic. More ferocious red armour. Brown and black mixes of ink create an effective wolf pelt. Green ink for another strange armour effect. A 40k adventurer with a face to remember, thanks to more orange and brown mixes. A more subtle blend, blue, brown, green and black give this individualistic armour effect. Experiment with the mixes and try to resist working straight from the pot. Celebrating Snotlings, blissfully ignorant of the thinned yellow glaze that brightens their green shading. This Skaven's fur, the wood and the leather pouches are all treated with a brown ink wash for added depth. The putty built base is also washed with brown. Dry brush this with Citadel colour if you like. Every component on this plastic elf archer has been given an ink shading wash. Green ink for flesh shading and brown, black and blue combinations for the armour make this an eye-catching miniature. Inks lend the natural tones to the bup skin, green leather and the birdie in this figure. It's the different mixes which create the strength of realism. Ink washes transform the base colours. Citadel colour is worked on top to add the highlights. Note the use of black ink on the gun and sword that help give the superb metal effect. An orange-yellow glaze on this tiger-striped space marine proves there's no need for subtlety. The browns on the fur and red on the shield are results of more effective ink meddling, but care needs to enter into the mixers if you want this level of realism. With inked flesh and armour, this orc stands out from the crowd, which probably means it will get shot at. Add yellow and brown to the green orc flesh if you find it's too garish. Thinned black shades this Eldar's armour and a green wash finishes off the plume. Argue with this tough little nut and he'll bite your kneecaps. Again, the thinned yellow glaze warms and brightens the base colours. None shall pass, exclaims the Chaos Warrior with the evocatively glazed bronze yellow armour created by mixing red, yellow and brown on top of the base colour and lightly highlighting with silver. Huh, just guard this corner for a low, says he. But nobody listened to the whinging Kev Adams model, who was ungrateful for the green and brown wash that made him what he was. So there you have it. What did you think? Did you ever use any of those hints and tips? Did you even use the inks in the correct way? Did you notice that back in the day the inks came in dropper bottles and they don't do that anymore? Did you prefer dropper bottles? Would you like to see a return to dropper bottles? Let us know in the comments below. If you want to see some more old Hammer videos, then check out the playlists up here somewhere. As always, thanks for watching and always remember to drill your barrels.